Hey guys, Pete here. Today I'm back with another Dark Season 3 video. I've been re-watching the final season to add to my notes, and today I have 33 details that you might have missed. I think 33 is the right number, but it's a big number, so I want to jump right in. Before we get started though, I've got to state the obvious, that this video will contain spoilers if you haven't finished watching Dark Season 3 yet. Now we can get started. Number one is that everything's mirrored in Alt Marta's world. I had a lot of comments asking about why the scratch on Marta's cheek moved from side to side in different scenes. The answer is that the creators used this as a mark to indicate which world we're in. It's not just that either. Everything is mirrored, including the interiors of the homes and the exteriors of places like the cave. This leads me to believe that they essentially flipped the shots after filming them. And what's crazy about that is that they would have to dress the sets in reverse. Think about this shot with Magnus and Marta and how all the print on the stuff in the background and his tattoos would have to be reversed to achieve the effect. In the origin world, things like Marta's scratch and the part in Jonas's hair match Adam's world. And since we're on the subject of the origin world, the next two items on the list pertain to that. Number two is that there's no power plant in the origin world. In this shot, we can see that the smokestacks are noticeably missing. It makes sense that if the unknown doesn't exist in the origin world and therefore never forces through the paperwork, that the coal lobby would be able to block the power plant from being built. Number three is that they use a different aspect ratio when we visit that world to set it apart. We see that the black bars above and below the image are slightly larger, and the color grading seems brighter. Since they already used the mirror effect for Adam and Ava's worlds, they needed a different visual clue to help mark where we were. There are a few subtle differences thrown in, like the location of the bus stop and the different door on the entrance to the bunker as well. Number four, speaking of things that look the same but different, Dark has always done a terrific job of casting actors who resemble each other to portray characters showing up at different ages through the story. Season 3 is no exception, and this time they even cast some real-life father and sons. For the adult unknown and the older version, they cast Jacob and Hans Deal, who clearly have a family resemblance. The one that really blew me away, though, was the character they cast to portray a teenage Peter Doppler. For this, they cast Stefan Kampworth's real-life son, Pablo Strebeck, for the part. I love the way they set up this scene and literally yelled out, It's Peter! when he turned to the camera. Number five is about another great scene in episode two when Elizabeth and Charlotte are together in the cave. Charlotte gets up to walk away, and as she goes, Elizabeth tells her everything will be okay. This pair, who are each other's mother, then come together to comfort each other, which is a callback to season one when they did the same thing. Number six is also about Charlotte and Elizabeth because I've had a lot of questions related to these two. First, it was assumed that Claudia was the one who stole baby Charlotte away from Noah and Elizabeth. We learn in episode seven that Adam actually sent older Charlotte and older Elizabeth to take her to Tan House. In his conversation with teenage Charlotte, we learned a couple more things as well. He tells her about the strange women who showed up at his door with her. He tells her on that same day, his son and his wife died in a car crash with his granddaughter and that the baby's body was never found. Because of that, he was able to pass off Charlotte, who was brought to him from the future, as his real granddaughter. So in the scene when he tells her about that, she's learning for the first time that they aren't related by blood, and that he has no idea who her real parents are. The story of the Doppler family keeps getting crazier, but the couple from number seven actually managed to outdo them. That is, of course, Marta and Jonas, who we learned are the center of the family tree knot that is Winden. Jonas and Alt Marta have a child together, and things get really interesting from there. Their son, who appears as a trio of characters at three different ages, doesn't have a name, so he's referred to as the Unknown. After he's born, he impregnates both Agnes Nielsen's in both worlds, which connects everyone beyond that back to Jonas and Marta. The male line goes, Jonas... Unknown, Tranta, Ulrich, Mikkel, Jonas. So if you're keeping track, that makes Jonas his own great, great, great grandfather. Another interesting detail here is the couple is really the beginning and the end of things. They start the knot and then later undo it when they travel to the origin world where none of their descendants exist. 
Speaking of Mr. Conwall, number eight is this shot of him dying in Ava's world. The way he's laying on the ground makes the family tree look like angel wings. And that's interesting since Tanhouse's daughter-in-law, Sonia, mentions angels after Jonas and Marta stop them from getting into the car crash. He's dying on the floor of Ava's lair. And number nine is the name of her group. Adam's world has Sick Mundus and Ava's has Eret Lux, which translates to there will be light. We see this on the metal door to the passage in her world. Number 10 is Eret Lux's symbol, which is two snakes with wings. This is called a caduceus symbol. And what you might have missed is that Magnus has a tattoo of this above his sternum. For number 11, we'll stay on Ava and her lair. You might have missed that her family tree is actually wrong. It has Tronta listed as Regina's father, which was the popular theory heading into season three. It turned out that Claudia and Bern Doppler were Regina's parents. And what's interesting about this is that Claudia was probably deceiving Ava since she's likely the only person who knew the truth. Number 12 is also related to parentage. At the end of episode six, when Ava is sending her travelers back to preserve the loop, she tells Aegon to create his past to preserve the family tree. A lot of people have been asking about this, so this is my understanding. In Ava's world, Hannah is married to Ulrich and pregnant with his child at the time of the apocalypse. Just before the older Aegon arrives, she suffers a miscarriage. We know they are still Cilia's parents in both worlds, but her path is different since she hasn't traveled to the 1950s. This leads me to believe that Aegon will take her there to save her from the apocalypse, and that will put her in place to meet the younger Aegon and start their affair. On the subject of Cilia, number 13 is the look on Bartage's face when he hears that she wants to name their son Hanno. Remember Noah, aka Hanno Tauber, is the one who brought Bartaz into this mess in the first place. So at this moment, he would be realizing that he was meeting with his own son. What makes this even more insane is that we know that Noah kills his own father in the opening of season two. Number 14 is another Celia one, and it's something I didn't notice myself. I got this one from Kim Renfro's great Things You Might Have Missed article on the Insider website. Kim is one of my favorite writers because she always digs deep and you can tell she's a fan. And I will put a link to her article in this video's description because she includes a lot of stuff from the first and second seasons. Anyway, Kim pointed out that Celia is wearing the same clothes she had Marta take off in the future when she arrives back in 1890 to get together with Bartage. Number 15 deals with that same time period. One of the biggest questions about Jonas's story was how he transformed into the stranger and then later Adam. What a revelation it is to find out just how lame that process actually was for him. We see that he's stuck in post-apocalyptic Winden after surviving the actual apocalypse, unable to go anywhere because Ava is making Claudia stall her progress on stabilizing the God Particle. Then he goes to do the things we saw him do in the first two seasons, only to get stuck in 1888, working to build the God Particle twin. What struck me the most about this was that we had been wondering how he got his trademark scar. My takeaway after season three is that this is a culmination of injuries. We see him get burned at one point, and that makes me believe that instead of being scarred from time traveling extensively, it's actually more of a death from a thousand paper cuts kind of situation. Number 16 is one that goes back even before 1888. We learn about the origin of the Golden Watch. Several people asked why the blind man, who turns out to be Gustav Tanhaus, had the watch in the scene where he's killed by the unknown. The answer is that the watch was passed down from his father, Heinrich Tanhaus, who originally bought it for his wife, who was named Charlotte. She died, and this led to the formation of Sigmundus, because Heinrich wanted to learn about time travel to try to go back and save her life. The name Charlotte and the idea of time traveling to save a departed loved one will continue on in the Tanhouse family throughout the generations. Number 17 is another one that I got from Kim's article, and it's about Magnus, where he's in front of the cave in the 2019 timeline. He says something to the effect of about 100 years just after the war, they did experiments in the caves. This is interesting because that would be around the time where Eret Lux would probably be doing the same things that Sick Mundus was doing at the beginning of season two, digging the passage and getting ready for it to open up years later. The next five are all bits of deja vu, and they start off with the experience that Marta and Alt Marta have under the bridge in the opening episodes of season one and season three. 
Next, we saw Bartosz in class talking about wormholes, which felt like a callback to seeing the classroom in season one. In that scene, the teacher was talking about symmetry and said, the repetition is mirrored along a central axis. So the repetition begins at an imaginary center point and branches off in two opposing directions. There was an interesting drawing that looks like the two worlds and the infinity knot on the board. So this is an early reference to how things played out in the final season. The next one is another one from school, and it's the actor who played Killian showing up in season one. He was in their school's version of the play Ariadne. He wasn't credited as being an Obendorf in season one, and this was his only scene, but it was played by the same actor, and it's connected to the same situation. Number 21 is Ulrich mentioning the apocalypse both times when he was coming back from the bakery because he was out having an affair. In season one, he's held up because he's spending time with Hannah. And in season three, he's telling Hannah that he was held up because he was spending time with Charlotte. Number 22 is Ava repeating Adam's line about a person living three lives. While it's not word for word, it is a variation and a callback to Adam talking with Jonas. The basic gist is that the first life ends with the loss of naivete, the second with the loss of innocence, and the third with the loss of life itself. Number 23 is that we hear about the phenomenon that Ava exploits for her loophole on the radio in 2020. Claudia is walking into the post-apocalyptic police station where she lives, and we can hear the radio. We hear, scientists are still looking for an explanation for the events of June 27, 2020. The presumed origin of the catastrophe is assumed to be the small town of Vinden. The woman continues, a French team of scientists believe it's possible that our world stood still for a a fraction of a nanosecond on June 27th. So later in the season three finale, we find out that Claudia learned how to use that to create a second reality and go to speak with Adam and get him to send Jonas and Marta to the origin world. Number 24 is that Regina now lives in the house that was the Conwald house in Adam's world and the Nielsen's house in Ava's world. This is pretty interesting when you think about it. The main character lived in this house in all three worlds. Number 25 is the world without wind in question that Regina asks is a callback. Remember, she said, if the world were to end today and you only had one wish, what would you wish for? Katarina thinks about that and says, a world without Wyndon. Let's drink to that. I mentioned that this is a callback to teen Ulrich and Hannah's conversation at the bus stop in season one, episode three in my ending explain video. So check that video out if you haven't seen it yet and you want to know more about that conversation. Number 26 is that Torben and Hannah are married in the origin world. Her name is actually listed in the family tree as Hannah Wohler. This makes you think about the comment that he made to Clausen when he said she was so pretty she could have had any man she wanted. It's a nice little reference to set up this relationship. Number 27 is also related to Clausen, and that's that the letter he received is almost definitely written by the unknown. Inside the letter, it said, He that has eyes to see and ears to hear may convince himself that no mortal can keep a secret. In season three, we hear the unknown use that same language, which actually comes from Sigmund Freud, when he's talking to the older blind Tannhaus. The next two are both related to music. The first is that the Nina song, Ergen V, Ergen Vo, Ergen Von, which we first hear in Mad's cassette recorder, and it pops up several times throughout the series, is the song they close out the last episode with. The title translates in English to Somehow, Somewhere, Sometime, and it has a real connection to what our characters go through. Number 31 is another music related one, and that's that the version of What a Wonderful World we hear during Jonas and Marta's last scene is performed by the artist Soap and Skin. She also performs the vocal track in the song Goodbye by Apparat that is played over the opening credits. So if the voice sounded familiar, you can now connect the dots. Number 32 is about the pendant on the beach. We saw when Katerina is killed by her own mother that she takes it from her. Remember, her mother got it from Hannah when they were at the abortion clinic. She kept that all of her life, and then when she was killing her own daughter, Katerina managed to pull it off. That got left on the beach, and years later, Jonas and Marta will find it. 
Number 33, and the last one on this list, is the story of the Lady in the Lake that was referred to in Season 2. So we know Katarina, she traveled back in time to try to rescue her son, Mikkel, and her husband, Ulrich. I just mentioned that she was killed by her own mother, and then her body was dragged into the lake. Years later, when they're swimming, Bartosz tells the story of the Lady in the Lake, that a woman's body was found at the bottom of the water. What's crazy about this is that Katarina was the woman, and Bartosz is telling the story to Marta, her daughter, to try to scare her. Magnus is also there, and it's a really sad way to end Katarina's story. And that is the entire list. I just talked through a long time, so I'm going to bring it to an end. Let me know how many of these you caught, how many of these you didn't see, any other ones that you picked up on that I didn't include. When I thought about the number 33, I thought I might have to add some things to get enough. It turned out to be the other way, actually. I was able to think of more. Some of them I combined and some of them I just whittled down to get us to 33 because that's pushing the limits for how long I like to make a video in the first place. So please like this video if you enjoyed it. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Let me know in the comments if there's any other dark videos you want to see. I'll be doing more this week. Thanks for watching. I'll talk to you soon.